consider thinking about purchasing the Tesla Model 3. But then you see the price tag and then feel a bit uneasy. Is the Tesla really worth the price? Hi everyone, my name is Austin and six months ago, I took the plunge and ordered a Tesla for the very first time in my life. Previously, every other car I've owned were Toyota, so I'm generally not one to break the bank for a car. But after six months of ownership, I'm here to share my experience with my Tesla, what I like and what I don't like about it. To give some quick context on the exact model I bought, I chose to get white paint since it was free at the time, in addition to the standard 18 inch aero wheels. If you pay an extra $1500, Tesla does offer sport wheels, which are one inch bigger than the aero wheels. But from what I researched, these wheels only provide a slightly better handling and braking, and there would also be a trade off in limiting the range of the car, so I felt it wasn't worth the upgrade. The only upgrade my Tesla I had was to upgrade the black interior to the white interior for an extra $1000. I chose this mainly for aesthetics purposes, so I wanted my car's interior to match my car's exterior. My only concern was with white chairs was that the chairs would stain very easily, but the dealers assured me that the material was also upgraded compared to the standard black interior, therefore making it very easy to clean and maintain this new look. So one of my favorite things about owning a Model 3 Tesla is that it's fully operational without any keys. In fact, if you own a smartphone, all you have to do is download the Tesla app. And now you can use your smartphone like a key fob would be to an internal combustion engine car. So as a person who often loses things, I love that that's just one less thing that I have to carry around. So as long as your phone has Bluetooth enabled and the Tesla app is running in the background, you pretty much can enjoy the car without ever having to worry about manually locking and unlocking the door yourself, or even starting the car. Also, because of the Bluetooth, you don't even need to take your phone out of your pocket. But if using a smartphone as a key isn't something that you're comfortable with, or you happen to lose your phone or need to let someone else use your Tesla, Tesla also offers cards that essentially act as your traditional key. And you can also buy a traditional key fob on the Tesla website for $175. So one of the new features that I love about the Tesla, specific to the 2021 Tesla Model 3 version, is that now it can wirelessly charge your smartphone. So no longer do you have to mess around with wires getting tangled or having to buy USB car adapters but instead now you have a sleek section of the car that just seamlessly fills out the center console of the car. These days I often just find my smartphone battery running low throughout the day, so it's such a luxury knowing that I can charge my phone while on my commute, and not having to worry about looking where I can charge my phone throughout the day. So I briefly talked about this earlier when I mentioned it's needed to operate the car, but I want to go more in depth on what the app provides because it really has become one of my favorite parts of owning a Tesla. Originally, I thought it would be cumbersome to have to download more stuff onto my phone and wondered how useful could it be, but now I see it as a gateway to information that's extremely relevant and convenient to me. In the Tesla app, not only does it give information like how much battery is left in my car, but also provides more control such as the ability to lock and unlock my car remotely, warm up my seats, or vent the windows if it's a hot day outside. There's also geolocation tracking on the car and other types of data such as charging statistics and car mileage in the car. The Tesla app is also where you'll access the security features you can set from your phone, such as sentry mode, which records all activity around the camera when the car is parked, and valet mode, which locks the trunk. Keep in mind that to use sentry mode, you need to plug a USB into the USB port in the glove compartment in order to save the footage. The Tesla app is also where I go if I encounter any issues with the car, via the service section. For example, when I first got the car, my door sill was scratched up and needed a new paint job. I then used the request service section on the phone and it directed me to a very easy form where I could detail the issue with my car in addition to an area where I could submit photos of the defect of the car. Tesla support immediately responded within a few hours and eventually they set up an appointment for me to bring my car into their factory shop so they could take care of the scratches. During the few days it would take to get the door sill repainted, since there are no more rental cars, they gave me a $100 Uber voucher every day until the car was ready for me to get picked up. The repair overall took about 5 days and was completely free of charge and the car door still looked brand new. So as a customer, it's extremely reassuring to know if anything in the future would happen to my car. I have instant access to people who know the car the best and will take care of both me and my car. Another aspect I like about the car itself is just the experience of driving it. Since there's no engine to ignite the car, starting up the car is quiet and fast. The experience of driving the car is smoother than anything I've ever experienced. There's just a quiet hum and it feels like you're on a high speed bullet train in Asia rather than a car. The ability for the car to accelerate from 0 to 60 is effortless compared to the past internal combustion engine cars I've driven. The car also relies on a concept called regenerative braking, which essentially slows the car down once you release the acceleration pedal, 
at that friction of the car breaking, it suddenly transferred back into the energy that would be used for charging the car. When I first drove a Tesla on my first test drive, this regenerative braking felt really weird because when I released the acceleration pedal, it almost felt like the car was suddenly stopped instead of slowly decelerating like most internal combustion engine cars do. But after about 15 minutes, I eventually got the hang of it as I realized I just had to slowly let go of the acceleration pedal to do a smooth deceleration. The seats of the car are also made out of a vegan synthetic leather and are extremely soft and comfortable. Both the front seats can be adjusted in three ways, forward, backward, the angle of the backrest, and the mid-back lumbar support, which ensures the chair will give you really good back support. The two front chairs also have the ability to be heated, which is great for cold weather days, but also energy efficient when compared to using a basic car heater. Through my experience, the heat inside the chair heats up extremely quickly, and with three different levels of heat, this ensures that the seats never get too hot. The back chairs also have a good amount of legroom, which is a surprise to me considering this car was on the shorter end of Tesla cars. But I do concede it would probably be tight for three people in the back, though it certainly is manageable. When it comes to storage space, the Model 3 doesn't disappoint at all. Its trunk is as big as any sedan as I've had, and it's also able to open and close remotely. There's also a storage compartment underneath, and you can even push down the back seats if more storage is needed. There's also a front area since there's no engine if more space is needed. Another aspect of my Tesla is that the technology isn't just to look nice, but there's a lot of technology dedicated to safety. For example, not only is there a camera on the rear, but there are cameras on both the left and right door that give you multiple angles when backing at the car. The side camera also helps assure that it will be safe to change lanes, because if there's a car in my blind spot, the car will beep alert me that it isn't safe to change lanes. The car also has a sensor that tells me how many inches away I'm hitting from the front or from the side, which is useful if you have a tight garage and are afraid that the mirrors are going to be scratched. The cruise control that comes with the car is also slightly different, as it is called adaptive cruise control, which means outside the normal cruise control features where you're always at set at one speed, Tesla will be able to brake the car and lower the speed automatically if it senses the car ahead is too close, and then it will readjust its speed once the space in front lengthens again. Also, with the constant software updates, you can be assured that Tesla will continue to develop more features to improve its safety, and it has already won many awards for being the safest car in the past. Another part of the car I like is that the glove compartment can also be locked with a passcode. Especially now knowing that car break-ins happen a lot these days, it's just comforting to know to have that extra layer of protection for your valuables. When it comes to maintaining the car, I find the car relatively easy to keep clean. With a wet towel and some dishwashing detergent, it's really easy to keep the car looking brand new. But when it comes to normal checkups, like what one would have to do with an internal combustion engine car, such as oil change, fluid change, or even brake pads, only a Tesla would such to get you out of those routine checks, which I found to be personally awesome, because it meant less errands for me, and also less likely there would be an issue with the car. When it does come to things to regular change, Tesla recommends rotating tires every 6,250 miles, and then replacing the car tires every 30,000 miles. Tesla also recommends checking the brake fluid and cabin filter every two years and AC bag every six years for the Model 3. But that's significantly less maintenance that I would have to deal with when comparing to an internal combustion engine car. So clearly there's a lot to like about the Tesla, but there are some things that I don't like. Though it's a nice free add-on, the Tesla GPS isn't always the most accurate from my experience. I often have a long commute to work that forces me to go through highways with heavy traffic and oftentimes I see that the ETA and quickest route that Tesla gives me are not always correct, mainly because it doesn't seem to detect traffic as well as compared to Google Maps. So I'm often having to cross check with Google Maps to make sure I'm taking the most optimal routes during times with heavy traffic. One of the great perks that Tesla offers is the ability to stream music and connect to its browser. But keep in mind that feature is considered premium, so it now costs $10 a month. Now when I first got the car, Tesla did offer a 30 day trial of the connectivity and although it was pretty cool to have music and podcast streams in my car, I didn't find the feature worth paying for as I could often just Bluetooth my phone into my speakers instead. Though supposedly it does seem Tesla is looking to allow users to tether their data into Tesla features that would require the internet, so this may not be as big of an issue in the future as it is now. Because I didn't want to spend more money than I thought I would actually need to, I also chose not to buy Tesla's $12,000 add-on for self-driving. But the basic Tesla Model 3 2020 version at least doesn't come with basic autopilot. But at least, to me, it doesn't feel safe at all, as it doesn't seem to stay in the center of the lane, so I generally avoid it if there's a relatively good number of cars alongside me on the road. Also, the autopilot tends to be very conservative in terms of keeping a large gap in front, which is reassuring for safety purposes, 
but as a driver when it comes to heavy traffic these huge gaps allowed other cars to cut me off so unfortunately it wasn't as useful as i thought it would be the only time where i thought to have autopilot to be somewhat useful is only if there are very few cars around though i do expect this is an area that tesla will continue to improve as there's more software updates in the future although the touchscreen layout overall is a very sleek design especially with the new layout I really didn't like how the basic settings in the car, like defroster, have to be hidden between multiple buttons. I do realize over time I have gotten faster at this and it's less of an issue, but overall when it comes to settings like this when driving the car, it certainly isn't ideal and I hope Tesla does redesign this when it updates the software. Another issue of the Tesla is that it isn't ideal for people who don't have a garage or access to wall charging. So you can charge a Tesla on your standard 120 volt outlet, which is called level 1 charging. But at best, you only charge 5 miles an hour, so a full charge would take at least 40 hours. Granted, you're not likely to use up all 260 miles in one day, but it's also a huge inconvenience if you come home and want to fully charge it for a long road trip the next day, because at that point, the 120 volt outlet would be useless, and you need to go to a supercharger instead. But really, the ideal scenario to have when buying a Tesla is having a garage, because then you can install a NEMA 1450 charger. And then what Tesla calls level 2 charging, you can then charge the car at about 36 miles an hour, which allows you to charge your car from 0 to 100% in one night. So without access to this type of wall charger, you would have to charge your car essentially every day in addition to making occasional trips to the supercharger, which is manageable, but certainly isn't ideal and something to consider if you want to buy a Tesla but don't have access to level 2 charging. The last thing I don't like about my Tesla is its limited range. Generally, I have the standard range, it gives me about 260 miles on a full charge, which is okay most of the time because my commute doesn't go past an hour, and I generally don't drive anywhere past 60 miles. But if I was to drive further than that, it would require me to go use a Tesla supercharger, and charging the car fully generally takes about 45 minutes, which isn't ideal if you have to take a long commute or a road trip. I have also heard stories where people have taken their Tesla into the mountains, and their battery has drained faster than expected, leaving them stranded. So yeah, it is something to be aware of if you tend to take long road trips in more remote areas, especially with higher elevations. So that's about all I have to share so far for 6 months of ownership. Overall, even though it is more money than I would normally spend for a car, I truly think I am getting a lot of extra benefits and some of the best car technology in the industry with the extra money. The car itself looks sleek and modern, and on top of that, you just really have awesome amenities that most base standard model cars don't have. I definitely don't feel like I overpaid at all for this car. Keep in mind, Tesla also offers free test drives on their website so you can personally experience driving a Tesla for yourself before you decide on purchasing one. So I hope this review and sharing my experience helps. If you guys like content like this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, thanks guys.